New details shedding light on a gun battle in Mount Vernon at an alleged commercial drug den where two men were murdered. Wednesday night, five people were in federal custody in connection to the botched armed robbery. In less than 24 hours and working with our law enforcement partners, um, we've been able to start to bring um, some more light to this situation. With one still on the run, the five suspects were tracked down through video surveillance in a Bronx apartment complex along Clinton Avenue, according to federal prosecutors. Members of the FBI and Mount Vernon police moved in near Fordham University Tuesday. I saw a helicopter overhead looking with a spotlight and just all kinds of sirens. Arresting the men and towing the alleged getaway van. The partnerships gets the work done. Thursday afternoon, we saw that work continue at the warehouse on South 5th Street at the scene where a warehouse worker and robbery suspect were killed. The FBI removing boxes of evidence following the Monday night mayhem. The products uh, range from uh, products you would find in a smoke shop. An informant telling the feds the group expected to rob the warehouse of $8 million and six kilograms of cocaine. The U.S. attorney says the wholesaler had been selling unlicensed pot and nicotine to the public. The lyrics in the small Bronx apartment would play in the background just as they did before, as the men sat around plotting their next robbery. Eight million waiting for them, plenty of weed and six bricks. At least that is what they were told was there. And they wanted it all. Yeah, itch, I said what I said. I'd rather be famous instead. I let all that get to my head. I don't care, I paint the town red. Bitch, I said what I said. I'd rather be famous instead. I let all that get to my head. I don't care, I paint the town red. That's my shit right there, one of the men would yell out. This one would be bigger than the last ones. Victor Jimenez bopped his head to the beat, never knowing that it might be the last time he bopped his head to paint the town red. That's my shit right there too, homie, he would say out loud, the other men smiling at him. Hilario Contreras, Jerpy Diaz Feliz, Marco Tulio Fernandez, Joseph Perez, and a few others. All young men in the streets, heavy, getting ready to paint the town red for the last time. They had a lick and just knew they were about to get that bag, this time in a real way. The conversation went from who they would sell the product to after the jokes to what they thought they would come up on. The perfect plan was in place. Of course, nothing could go wrong. There were no thoughts about the possible death penalty or any of them dying tonight. After all, this wasn't their first time. Robbery had become a part of their lives. It was their jobs. But this one right here was going to put real money in their pockets, or so they thought. It was time. They would load up the weapons, no half-stepping. If anyone got out of line, bang bang, have a nice dream. The warehouse was doing big numbers, millions of dollars in product, waiting for them to take, including whatever bread they had made that day. It was all theirs, big dreams. They walked out of the Bronx apartment near Clinton Avenue, inhaling the cold March air from their neighborhood on March 18, 2024, as the plan was now set in motion. The light on the dash panel said it was 9.54 p.m. when they arrived on South Fifth Avenue in Mount Vernon. The wholesale warehouse that sold big bags of weed and every vape and hookah available was now theirs for the taking or at least that is what they thought. Everybody was subject to become a victim, even the robbers. The warehouse employees were locked and loaded and always contemplated this moment happening, hoping it never came, but knowing it was always possible. A big order was placed by regular customers that took two hours to fill. The young robbers would pull up in their van as they sat silently in the moment, hearts thumping, ready to do what they came to do. As the warehouse workers exited the warehouse to help the customers carry the boxes to their vehicle, the men would jump out of their van, running towards the two warehouse workers and the customers. Guns drawn, they would order everyone back to the warehouse. Don't say shit, shut the fuck up and lay down. Lay down, they would yell, violence at the ready. Nobody move, where the weed at? Don't play games with me, Victor Jimenez would yell. Some of the employees had their hands in the air when Jerpy grabbed one, slamming him to the ground with one hand on a nine and the other hand on his shirt. I told you to get on the ground, right, stupid? I should blow your head off, you dumb mother. And then... The crack from an AR-15 pierced the air. Everything was loud, and then silence. The moment no one thought would come, the robbers or the store clerks, it just got real. Gunshots rang out like a bell. One of the robbers, Ramon Acosta, took the first shot to the head. His young life extinguished, all for the hopes of getting rich quick. His dreams would forever lay still, a black knight hooded sweatshirt with the hood covering his face, or what was left of it. Gray and black jeans, along with his green and white sneakers, now muddied with his own blood. He would never return to his apartment in the Bronx. Now his family 
would have to bury him. When Salam Rabadi let his AR speak, the others would be robbers and the still of night would fire back. The first shot hitting him in the chest, another striking right next to the other one. As he was falling, more lead would fill his body. Four AR spent shell casings laid at his feet as he took his last breath under a shelving unit. Another yet robber yelled out, motherfucker wanted to be a hero. And in that moment, he knew that his life might be over one way or the other. With everything going bad, it was time to go. The hot metal in their hands, it was time to get out of the warehouse before it got worse. Before leaving, Victor Jimenez would reach down and grab his best friend's ID from his pocket. Romano, forever gone. Police sirens would fill the air as numerous calls came in about gunshots and someone from the warehouse called in a panic, screaming for help. Cops would arrive. Within the first 48, everything ticking, it would not be long before investigators were sitting outside the Bronx complex, watching and waiting for the people they already had on their radar. Like the streets always do, they were talking before the minivan pulled off with the suspects. The FBI and cops from Mount Vernon at about 7 o'clock p.m. on March 19, 2024, would observe seven males and two females leave the Bronx complex with a large drawstring bag and grocery tote bag, both of which appeared full and placed them into the trunk of the van. Right after a Honda Civic arrived in front of the Bronx complex, two shooters got out of the van, grabbed the two bags out of the trunk and placed them in the back of the Civic and got into the Civic to speed away. Five other dudes got out of the van and split in different groups, one group getting into a white Jeep and another group into a white Audi. And as they drove off into the next part of their plan, they knew it was all over. The flashing lights that they hoped would never be a part of their escape were there already, at gunpoint. They were removed from the vehicles, and life as they knew it was forever over, lost to the streets. Unfortunately, too many mothers have to bury their sons. Too many mothers have to go visit their sons for the rest of their lives in a federal prison, New York State prison. The Bronx, dangerous place. Bunch of young dudes that never see 20. And every single one of them that never see 20, have the perfect plan. Whether they get smoked in the street or they get smoked in a courthouse, it's over with. How many young men see 25 from the Bronx, right, that are caught up in that street life? Very few. How many times you see dudes got the perfect robbery plan? I can't tell you how many cases I've done. And it brings to mind my really close friend, Victor Lorenzano, sitting in federal prison with a hundred and something years right now because they had the perfect plan. They're running around robbing drug dealers. You know, we're about to go get these dudes. Next thing you know, you're in a, you're in a trial and the judge hits the hammer. It's over with, man. Hereby I sentence you to Federal Bureau of Prisons for 150 years. See you later. Ain't nothing left but the crime, right? These cats are sitting around. They're plotting. They've been doing some robberies. Yo, that warehouse. Someone tells them, yo, the warehouse, they got six bricks. Yo, they're doing millions and millions of dollars worth of business. Yo, there's eight million over there. They don't ever stop and think like, damn, they got eight million in there? Like, how that, where, the, where the hell you keep $8 million at? In a warehouse in Mount Vernon? Probably not. They don't think about that. They don't think about, damn, man, we go up in here, man. These dudes, you know, people done seen they had the AR behind the counter. And, you know, all these dudes are suited and booted, ready for action. They don't think about none of that. They don't think about the consequences, right? They don't never, I, I can promise you this, they don't never think that they would be sitting in federal court with a death penalty, right? With a death penalty prosecution lingering in the air. They already filed some paperwork on it. Yo, we need a special public defender because this cat right here is facing the death penalty. Imagine that, being in your 20s and a, the public defender's office comes out and says, hey man, check this out, right? I know you're only 24, but they're, you know, they're seeking the death penalty. What? The death, death? Now the streets ain't the streets no more, right? Now they're talking about, you know, taking your life. Now it gets real when you're all alone sitting in a cell. These cats had the perfect plan, but what happens? Remember how we talked about the two chicks that are, you know, in the vehicle with them or to help, you know, get rid of the drawstring bags? What do you think are in the drawstring bags? The guns, of course. The guns, of course. When they get down there, they arrest everybody. They get down there. They put them all in separate rooms, the interrogation room. They start talking to the people inside the criminal complaint. It says, you know, one of the people that are cooperating told us exactly what was going to happen, exactly what, you know, what was going down. They got it all already. Right away, they're already at these people's house, man. In less than 24 hours. That first 48 show, they give it to you real and wrong. They're sitting out in front of the complex already. They're like, yo, we got you. We're just waiting for you to come out. As soon as you come out, man, guns drawn. It's over with. And I'm sure the police are thinking, hey, man, these dudes right here are shooters. They might go out in a blaze of glory. But how many people go out in a blaze of glory, right? 
You see these dudes escape and smoke people when they escape from prison. And they don't go out in the blaze of glory. It's just all tall. All that tough guy shit's out the window. But I'm sure when they're in the jail, they're like, yo, you know, you're still protecting that image, man. That street image, right? I mean, what else is what else is there left? This is all you got now. This is it, man. Concrete and steel. This is it. It all went bad. Their man gets smoked. Mother has to go bury him. Lay in there in his Nike hoodie. Got the hoodie over his face. And the back of his shit is gone. It's over with. Imagine your mother having to go down there and be like, yeah, that, that's my son. She's got to go identify you. Yeah, that's my son. His man, Jim and as he reaches in his pocket, like, man, I better get his ID. Can't let them get that. Let me grab that. Boom. Gets his ID. He thinks he's still got the perfect plan, right? They find you, man. These people, 99% of the time, they find you, man. How many times have you seen these big robberies, man, where nothing goes wrong? They just get away, right? Just It all works out. Might work out for the time being. You might catch a lick here or there. But, man, it's always the big one. It's always the big one. You do big things, you get big things, including big time. Better think about it, man. Caught up in the streets, you better think about it. Think about the consequences. Think about what could happen. If they could put everything in reverse and watch it, you think they would still do it? Of course not. Of course not. You could put it in reverse. Sit back and think about it, man. You might you might be that dude when, when the plan's getting put together in that Bronx apartment where you're like, you know what, man? I'm good, man. I'm out. I'm, I'm, I'm good on this one. And in reality, you're probably like, damn, I know that I should probably not do this shit. I should probably walk away. But again, it's that image, man. Homies are like, oh, man, come on, man. What do you want? Some girl shit, man? Come on, man. You don't want to feel like that. But wouldn't you rather feel like that than sitting in that cell rubbing your head? Them dudes are sitting in that cell rubbing their head, man. They got their brush. They're brushing their hair right now, man. Nonstop. Can't tell you how many times I've seen dudes get that, that brush off a commissary and be stressed out and just be brushing the same spot. It's over with, man. Lights out. Death penalty case. Stay tuned. Blood on the Razor Wire TV with respect. Till tomorrow, we're out.